Hey Luminots, I've got a quick one for you today, but it covers something that I get a ton of questions about. How do I claim a claimable balance? I'm going to show you how to look up your claimable balances and claim them or turn them into some XLM, all without the use of any wallet. We're going to be using the Stellar Laboratory. No big deal. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's super simple to use. If you want to learn a little bit more about the lab, I did a whole video covering how to do stuff in there and I'll put the link to that at the end of this video. So real quick, let's go over what a claimable balance is. So a claimable balance in essence splits a payment into two separate parts, a send and a receive. This differs from a normal payment where the send and receive happen at the same time and certain conditions such as a trust line to that asset on Stellar must exist beforehand. So a claimable balance would kind of be like your grandma mailing you a check. They did their part and sent it, but it's up to you to claim it by depositing it into your account. Or you could just throw it in the trash. Or maybe your grandmother was on vacation and she sent you a check for pesos. And you find someone to exchange that for your local currency. Or maybe your grandma played a joke on you and post dated the check two months in the future and you can't do anything with it until then. Thanks a lot, Grandma. But enough talking, let's see how everything I just said plays out in the real world. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get to the Stellar Lab. So we're going to load up Stellar.org. Under the Use Stellar tab, we are going to go to Stellar Laboratory. And this brings us to the lab. I'm going to be working on the test net. If you're doing this with your real account, you will need to switch this to public. I'm gonna click on Explore Endpoints claimable balances, all claimable balances, and then I'm going to paste in the public key for the account that I want to see the claimable balances for. That's the only field you need to fill in here, and then we'll click Submit. And this is going to give us a list of all the claimable balances where the public key I put in is listed as a claimant. So I'm gonna go through these one by one and explain the important fields that we're looking at here. So this first claimable balance under records is, here's the ID for it. We will need that for later. The asset that it's for, so it's for Aqua, and here's the issuer. This is the test net. This is not the real Aqua on the network. It shows the amount. The sponsor will be the account that sent the claimable balance. And then here are the claimants, the people that can claim this. So the first one looks to be the same key as the sponsor. And you'll see a lot that are like this. This is so in case you never claim it and it sits there forever and ever and ever, there's also someone else that can claim that back so that it's not just money floating out there in the abyss forever and ever. So those are the important fields. There are a couple extra that I set up on these other ones. So sometimes you will see one that only has one claimant. Sometimes you will see them that have what's called predicates. So claimable balances can be set up that certain people that can claim it can only claim it, for instance, after a certain date. So this one, our key, is listed with a predicate that says not before this date. So sure enough, Grandma did what we said and sent us some money that we can't even claim until October 11th. Thanks a lot, Grandma. And then this last one is for this BRC asset. Never heard of it. We'll probably just junk that one. And also an unconditional predicate, meaning you can claim this at any time. So for each asset that we want to claim or junk, we need to save the ID the asset code, which is right here before the colon, the asset issuer address, and then in some cases we're going to need the amount. And so we'll go ahead and write those essentially four things down, the ID, the asset code, the issuer, and the amount down, and save those so we can work with them in just a second. So after you have that information saved, we'll start building our transactions to claim them or junk them. So we're going to scroll to the top of the laboratory and click on build transaction. 
And we're going to go over, there's two different scenarios here. You want the asset and you're going to claim it. There's also, if you want to claim it, you may need to add the trust line for it. And then there is the option to junk them. And before we just throw them in the trash and essentially burn the asset, we're going to try and turn them into a little bit of XLM. So for this first scenario, we're going to say it's an asset that we want to claim. So we had a USDC claimable balance. We know what that asset is. We checked the issuer, made sure it was the real USDC. And so we're going to go through the process of claiming that. My account here on the testnet does not have any trust lines open. So we are going to add that to part of the process here. If you already have a trust line to the asset open, you'll be able to skip that part. So we're going to build our transaction here. The first thing it asks for is our key. We'll need the key for the source account. And that is that key right there that had the claimable balances ready. We will click get the next sequence number for this account. We will scroll down. And like I said, we do not have a trust line to this asset yet. So the first thing we're going to do is add that. So we will do a change trust operation and we will put in the asset code USDC. This is all stuff that you saved from the claimable balance screen. And then the issuer here for this USDC, paste that in, we can leave trust limit blank. So now this will add the trust line. Now we'll add an operation to claim that claimable balance. So we will do a claim operation and the only thing it needs here is the claimable balance ID. So we will grab that one and paste that in. Simple as that. So if you already have the trust line open, you can go ahead and skip this first part and you'll just have one operation in your transaction. Get to the next screen here and we will need to put in our secret key for the account that we're claiming from. And then scroll down and submit our transaction. Great success. So everything worked good. We now have a trust line open and we claimed that USDC from grandma. So the next scenario we'll go over is if you don't want the asset and we're going to try and turn it, even if you don't want it, we will first try and turn it into some XLM for you. So for this one, I'm going to use the Aqua asset that we had a claimable, claimable balance for. Say that 10 times fast. So I'm going to go back up to build transaction and we can just click to get our next sequence number and go down. Same thing, I need to open the uh, trust line to the asset because my account doesn't have any trust lines open. And this is for the Aqua asset. So we will paste the issuer address in there for that asset. So that will open the trust line. Next, we're going to claim that claim, claimable balance. One of these times I'll get that right. And then next, now that we've claimed that Aqua and remember we wrote down how much it was, so we got 10,000. So now we're going to add an operation for a path payment strict send. And so what this is going to do is say, I want to get rid of all 10,000 of this asset and Stellar will route it either through liquidity pools or through the DEX and then get you the asset you want. So we are going to tell it that our own public key is the destination. So this would also be known as a circular path payment. You are the sender and the receiver. And the sending asset we want to get rid of is the aqua. So we get the issuer for that. And the send amount, we want to make sure we get rid of all of them so that we can close the trust line afterwards. So send amount 10,000. And the destination asset we will select native. So that's XLM. And minimum destination amount, we just want to make sure we get rid of it. So we're going to put the absolute minimum here. We just want to get something for this asset. So now we have turned it into XLM and the next thing we can do is close the trust line. So we go change trust, same thing, 
put in the asset code and the issuer. And then if we set the trust limit to zero, that will remove the trust line. So now we're all set up here. And once again, if you already had the trust line to this asset, you would just remove this operation here. So let's go down and submit this transaction and see what we get. There we go. We successfully claimed that claimable balance, turned it into some XLM, and then closed the trust line. If we want to check and see how many XLM we got for it, what we can do is take this hash right here, go back up to Explore Endpoints, and then go to Operations, Operations for Transaction, and then paste in the hash and submit that. Then if we scroll all the way down here, we will see information about what happened. First thing we did, change the trust, claim the claimable balance, and then the path payment strict send. So let's dig in here a little bit and see how many XLM we got. So the source amount, this shows we sent the 10,000, shows that we were sending Aqua in the code, and then we received the asset type native, so that's XLM, and the amount we got was right at 200 XLM. So remember, we used a path payment strict send, which said we want to make sure to get rid of all of the Aqua, and the amount that we get back will be where the variable comes in. So that's how you check and see how many you actually got for that conversion. And for this last scenario, we're going to pretend like the transaction we just submitted returned an error that there was no path on Stellar to turn that claimable balance into any XLM. So it's essentially worthless. So let's go through how to junk a claimable balance. We'll go back to build transaction, get the next sequence number. And for this one, I had a claimable balance for an asset I didn't, I didn't recognize. So let's go ahead and we'll use that one to junk. Our asset code was BRC and our issuer, paste that in. So we're going to change the trust to this asset. Next, we are going to claim it. So I'll put in the claimable balance ID and Instead of path payment strict send, we're going to remove that, move this operation up to the third. So before we close the trust line, what we're going to do is a regular payment and a way to make sure you can get rid of this asset out of your account is to send it back to the issuer address. So we're going to paste in the issuer address to this asset right there we are going to send them back their BRC that they were the issuer of. And we got, how many BRC? They sent us one BRC. So we're gonna send all of those back to them. And then close our trust line to BRC zero. So there you go. Similar to the last one, except for, except for the payment type. So change trust claim it, send it back to the issuer, and then close the trust line. So let's go ahead and come down and submit that. Success. So that shows how to get rid of a claimable balance if you either just don't want anything to do with it, or if you tried the first method of turning it into XLM and there was no path. And after we do all that, if we want to see and make sure that we don't still have a trust line open, we can go back to Explore Endpoints, Accounts, Single Account, and paste in our public key. Click Submit. And when we scroll down, we can see that we have the USDC because we did claim that. And the only other asset that we have a trust line for is XLM, which everybody does. It's the native asset. So we did in fact claim the ones that we thought we did and then jump the ones that we wanted to. It's as easy as that guys. Grandma's gonna be super impressed. But before you go, I wanna give a huge thanks to everyone that's been super supportive of the channel so far. 
seeing all the likes and subscriptions is super motivating to me to do more of these videos in the future. So thank you, thank you to everyone that's been supportive and we'll see you next time.